Hello, everybody. It's Julie D. And welcome to my Inner Circle Speaker Series. And today I have Mary Jane Brigger, the Celtic Wise Woman, Psychic Medium and Channeler. And my question for her today is... Oh, boy. Okay. Here we go. Are you ready? I am. What You actually should know the answer. No. <laughs> I hope so. What, I knew that you were going to ask exactly. me this. Exactly. <laughs> What is the difference between a psychic and a medium? Oh, there's a difference. Um, there's a difference, but they also can be used together. There's some who are very, who only do psychic work, and there's some who only do mediumship work. But again, that's not answering the question. So what I'll do is I'll start with what is a psychic? So whenever you, you know, you'll hear someone saying, oh, I'm psychic because I already knew that, um, you know, oh, don't ask her, she's psychic. A person is psychic who has the ability to read your energy field. So your energy field stretches, depending on what kind of day you're having, but your energy field basically stretches out this far to your fingertips. Uh, if you've done something very exciting that day or something, or you feel really good about something, your energy field can be even lighter. But normally your energy field stretches out to your fingertips. So what a psyche can do is a psyche has the ability to what we call read your energy field. So what's in your energy field? Your energy field is basically your life force energy. If you're familiar with chakras, your chakras make up your energy field. Each part of your body has a feeling, has a function, has a role. But a psychic has the ability to scan your energy field, which holds your personal experiences, your memories. It holds um, your feelings. It's just basically one big information field of where you are actually on that particular day. So psychic readings are uh, very good for a couple weeks out. Um, I don't like to do more than three months because energy shifts and energy changes. So environments, uh, your own feelings and that can shift, but they're great if you want a reading for something that's going on right now uh, to try to get an explanation of, uh, say, a relationship or a job. They're great for like a couple weeks out. Because again, energy shifts. So what happens is when a psychic goes to give you a reading, he or she, psychics are both men and women, they will literally look into your energy field. And with the inner eye, sometimes we can see things visually around you, like some people see auras in different colors. But immediately we'll start picking up on the, the energy in your field that is seems to be blinking more, let's put it that way, that is broadcasting more. So say for instance, someone calls me for um, a question about a relationship going. Well, right away, I'll be drawn to where your energy is going regarding that relationship. Uh, I might see where it's picking up on a past wound maybe, or, your, or a past excitement. And so that all tells me what's going on with you regarding where to do, where to step. So it's really a great way to kind of check in on yourself and to um, know where you're going. And you can do this yourself. Most people don't realize this. We're not really taught how to read our own energy fields or our own bodies, that a psychic will be able to give you that information. And another thing that psychic work is very good is for medical intuitives. Now, a medical intuitive is someone who has the ability to really scan your body and find out the disturbances and the imbalances on your body. I myself go to a medical intuitive before I do anything. That's just me. I'm not telling somebody not to seek medical care. But the one that I use, who is just phenomenal, um, I've actually had doctors confirm he was right. <laughs> Yes. So it was, um, but that's where a psychic comes in. So it's um, um, being able to read someone's energy field and pick up on the different imbalances, disturbances, and things like that, that are creating the um, situation in your life. Now, a lot of people prefer, they want to read somebody else's energy field. And guess what? I'm not allowed to do that. <laughs> Right. You have to have permission, and that's intrusive. But I can read the energy 
of how you are reacting to them without invading that. So my suggestion to anybody is don't call a psychic and say, why does Junior not love me? Well, she can't, he or she can't go into that field, but we can look and see why this, you feel this is not happening. Now, a medium though, I think this is a whole different ballgame. Now, let me step back. Psychic, we can also pick up your guides and different spirits working within your field because we're full of them, okay? But generally we're looking at daily life type of issues, um, making this helping to make decisions and things like that. Now, medium is a whole different thing. A medium is someone who bridges, who is a bridge between the living world and between the spirit world. So that's where the word medium comes in. I like to say we're, we're a facilitator. So um, a medium has the ability to basically tune the radio in to the right frequency to the loved one or angel who's wanting to come in to talk to you. And what people um, don't really understand is, is that in the, in the world of spirit, they no longer have language. They're all vibration and frequency. So a medium basically has to tune in and we have to fine tune our tuning in. There's certain things and practices and the way we live to fine tune that theory. And to get the frequency that we are able to interpret what is being said. And one of the ways that um, I use quite a bit in my mediumship reading to bring in loved one is called blending. And I tell the spirit for me to better understand you, let's blend our energies together. And so I'll invite them to step in front of me and sit down in me. And then I just kind of wear them for a bit. And that's how a lot of times I'm able to um, discern how they passed away or um, how they would were remembering something. And so they use my body and my voice to be able to convey that. Another way that a medium receives messages for people from their loved one is symbols. And that very often is how we also interpret is that many mediums use symbols um, or little like movie shots that will come to us. And that will help us to understand. So say for instance, if someone's having a difficult problem and I'm listening and then spirit's trying to talk to me, I may get a quick uh, picture or movie of something that happened in my life a long time ago and I'm like oh this is about let's say abandonment which is a big thing that people are very often are feeling and I say okay you know, this spirit's coming through saying that there was a deep sense of abandonment that you felt in this relationship this is just an example so we we have to learn we use our bodies we don't use our minds this mind is just for logic and analyzing, but we use our bodies and we're taught we go through the heart because the heart is where we receive our information first. So again, we have to fine tune it. Uh, mediums also have the ability to bring in your pets and spirit guides and um, angels also. So there's different levels and different energies when doing this work. Psychic energy uses, um, there's no hierarchy here. It's just different forms of energy. It's all energy. You and I are energy. And so we use different forms of energy. But as the frequency rises, that is when we start to tap into the higher realms, which we're going to talk about next week when we talk about channelers and transmediums. Now, one thing that's interesting is that a psychic and a medium can do the same work. Often my readings will be both, can't go psychic, meaning you're going a little more into the detail of your life, um, but a psychic can't go into mediumship. So there are two different things. Some of us can do both, and some of us are, can only do mediumship or only do psychic work. So, but either way, you're still getting a connection to the spirit world. And 
it's more than a connection. If you if you approach a reading with the idea that you're really stepping into a sacred moment, that this is a time where all the world of spirit is around you to support you and whoever is giving you a reading, you will see a shift in the dynamics, uh, especially in mediumship, because with mediumship, we're really contacting the spirit world. And, you know, sometimes um, when we keep it sacred and we acknowledge the sacred around it, a lot of healing has been done from the afterlife to the living life. And I've done a lot of readings where the one who has passed over, the family member, is apologizing to a living member. Um, a lot of healing has happened in that way. Um, I've had it happen myself. Yeah, you've helped me in that regard as well. Yeah. So it's, you know, it gives well, people closure, I think. It, does. it gave me closure. And there's several people where what came up in the conversation is what they needed to hear. And they were able to talk back and forth. And often as we're blending as a medium, like myself who blends with spirit, we'll take on mannerisms and we may even take on their voice to help that healing process so that you know you're having that face-to-face -face conversation uh, it's fascinating work nobody believes it but y'all can do it hmm. but we're so programmed to not believe it and not to know that we have that power within us but y'all do and it's 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 something that you can tap into on your own i always tell people if you want to talk to someone in the spirit world just talk just talk and then the number one thing we are always taught when, when we are we are learning this and in our continuing education classes is you want to speak to spirit or you want to read your own psychic field. Get, make it a bit quiet, take five minutes and ask the question. Now out loud, right? You can do it either way. Okay. You can do it. There's different vibrations. Sometimes out loud works best. I myself always get settled in and I ask through my heart and you go with the very first impression. The very first. If you wait, then it goes into analyzing. <laughs> then it goes into other things and then you've lost that spirit. But at that moment you ask, and if it's blank, okay. Resell yourself, do it later or do it again. Go with the first one you hear, and then you'll be as amazed how, as it goes on, you'll start to understand that you can do this yourself. Now, a lot of us, including myself, do, um, I do a lot of courses, both out of town here, online. Um, so I do a lot to fine tune myself, but that's because I do this professionally, but there's many people who just want to do it every day, and that's that's one of the best ways to do it. And to end it, you can also just put a notepad down or pen and paper or on your computer and ask the question, and this is called automatic writing, and just start writing. And spirit will speak to you. And if it scribbles or it's let it go. I actually, I did that this morning. I'm like, I feel I need to journal, but I don't know what the question is. So I thought, all right, I'll just start. Well, it was wonderful because I got something off my chest and I understood it and I knew that it was spirit working with me. So we, we all have that ability, but that's the difference between a medium and a psychic. And it's not scary. It's not woo woo. It's really something that we are spirit beating beings in a human body. I, I do and have so a question. We're, yes, ma'am. Um, one thing that you mentioned, I don't think I've ever heard before is um, pets. So you can yeah. connect with pets that have passed yeah. on? Yes, yes. Um, there are people who are who specialize in animal communication. My sister is one. She's like an intuitive dog trainer. So she's actually able to read the dog's energy and understand where the issues are. But you can speak to your pets. Um, once they're in spirit because your your pets are no different than your loved ones who have crossed over they miss you too and so they they hang around and um all my pets 
I see them, I feel them, I see them out of the corner of my eye. Um, if they're on, my, if a pet is on your mind a lot, that means they're visiting. Um, just the other night, I have a little black dog here called Fergus, and the other night it was dusk, it was just getting kind of dark, and I didn't know he was in the back bedroom, and it was dusky dark, not that I could walk down the hallway into the doorway, but dark enough that, you know, I had to be careful. Well, I used to have a little black dog named Chibi, who always had her bed there, and I feel like I walked into a time warp where Chibi just wanted to visit. But as I walked through the doorway, it was like I walked through this portal and I saw this little black dog come to me and I went, oh, hi, Chi Chi. And I'm petting And then all of a sudden I'm looking and it was Fergus. And I was so, so excited because she stepped. Oh, I'm getting chills here. Her spirit stepped in. Oh, she's just telling me yes. Um, stepped into Fergus because I just needed to touch her. Hmm. And so your pets can, I mean, you know, I've been having fun with that for the last couple of days, but we can, our pets can come back and communicate with us. Um, yes, very often if they're following you around or the cat is laying there on the keyboard or, you know, the dog's still at your side and um, if you just allow yourself to relax into the moment, you'll feel them. You can touch them. I can feel my dogs. Like I'm thinking of one of the dogs right now. So I can feel the furriness of her and I can feel her sweetness. So yeah, we can. And um, there are people that are called animal communicators who that's specifically what they do is they'll contact your pets. Another thing about pets though too, pets can also be your guides. They can actually come back to help you in this life. And so very often, if I'm having a strong feeling of one of my pets who's crossed over, and I'm thinking, wow, you're pretty strong. I'm glad you're here. But then they think, okay, well, this particular dog gave me a lot of um, love. So you're here to just make me feel extra love today. And there's some I can tell they're there being a protector. And I recently had my black cat come through and he hung around for about two weeks. But that's because I was going, I was evolving in my own spirit life. And so he was representing spirit. Yes, that's the black cat. But um, it was quite fun. And I started seeing him running out the side of my eye. So sometimes you'll see them on your peripheral vision. So it's so hard to lose them, but you had just experienced yourself recently. Right. Um, but they're still there. We had to put our beautiful collie mix. We had to help him cross the rainbow bridge. It was actually, he was so ready to go. And when he did, he was laying on the floor, a big white blanket, and I was next to him, you know, help him cross over. And I opened my eyes and I saw him as a what a cry. I know. I saw him as a puppy. And he left this life blind and with dementia and he showed himself as a puppy. So these are things our animals and our pets do the same thing for us. And we just need to be open to them as much as we are to our loved ones also. Yeah, I think people will find that interesting because you don't hear people talking about that. No, but it's a big, it's a big demand. A lot of people want to talk to their animals. Again, you can do it the same way as with people. Just ask them to come forward. Know that they're running around you. I have already walked down the hallway or walked outside and began tripping over the dog right. or the cat. But the cat's right. not here physically. Anymore. Right. Well, at my previous um, job, there was uh, one cat that used to hang out with me all the time. And, you know, it just kind of like took a shine to me, but I could feel another one down my legs at times. And they said that there have, you know, been cats that, you know, have passed on. And um, so I think I was getting visited by some of the other cats that had been there before. Yes, if your energy likes a certain animal, it will, it will follow you. And um, that's the fun thing with the animals because one thing they can do very well and more frequently than we can is that when an, this is very interesting, when an animal crosses over, 
but feels a need to come back to you, their spirit can actually step into a current animal spirit. They make an agreement to exchange. So all of a sudden you're sitting there holding Fluffy and going, huh, you're like little buddy. But you look like Fluffy, but you're buddy. Right. Yeah, it is buddy. <laughs> right. And they have animals will exchange that energy. Um, I'm just going blank at the moment what it is because people have walk-ins. That's something that spirit and people have done. I mean, it, again, another subject for another time with people with the yeah. whole ball game. But animals do have the ability and the desire that they can come back in spirit and go into another animal. It may not be a dog if they were a dog. It may not be a cat, but you're going to be going there like, that's buddy. Yeah, it's, it is buddy. And you'll know that after a while. And sometimes it might just be brief because on a spirit level, they made an agreement. Because maybe that dog's like, I'm really not liking this here. Yeah. Buddy, you want to come back? Makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. And so they'll do an exchange and you'll, you'll be like one day with Fluffy and the next day with Buddy. And I'm like, <laughs> but that happens. That's the cool thing about the animal world. They, they do what they want. <laughs> so what are we going to talk about next time? So next time we're going to talk about another form of spirit communication called trans mediumship or channeling spirit. This is very different from psychic mediumship. This is when we're actually moving into the higher realms of spirit where uh, archangels, we're talking ascendant masters, councils, higher than that. And this is both a whole different way of how we bring messages in as mediums. And I'm trained as a trans medium. So I'm very excited to be able to, we'll be talking about that next time. I'll be giving you some examples, which by the way, brings me up to our event coming on Saturday, July 30th, coming up here in a few weeks, where I will be doing trans mediumship at, in Julie and I's sacred seance circle. And it's our sacred seance inner circle because this is an inner circle. We're keeping this small, just 10 people. We're having it here at the Healing Cottage down here in West Salem. And West Salem from Cleveland and Akron, a little under out, straight down 71. But we're holding it 430 to 7. And we're going to be out here in the country, this magical place called West Salem where I live. In our healing cottage and our next video we'll have pictures or you can go to my website at maryjanebrigger.com and click on the healing cottage to see it but we're going to hold a seance and this is going to be a different seance than being around a table which most are like and hands we're going to gather in circle and we're going to use our own energy and together within that circle i will be a trans medium to bring in the higher realms but also we'll be bringing in loved ones and messages. And who knows, maybe a fluffy or a buddy or two. Oh, you never a, know a spirit. You maybe, never know. <laughs> yeah, maybe a, maybe my dog will uh, say howdy. How had it happen? I have had, although I am not per se put myself out there as an animal communicator. They're like medium psychics now. We have our own specialties. But if an animal wants to come through, it will. And so uh, you never know. But uh, our seance will be here in our small white cottage. And it's quiet here. We're only 10 people. And it's $55. And you can register online right now and secure your sacred space at maryjanebrigger.com. And, and I'll have a link down below. And we'll have the link down below. And so, yeah, you'll be able to get to experience a little bit of all of this together. And Julie and I are very excited to welcome you all to come down here to the Healing Cottage and experience spirit in a very beautiful and sacred way. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's, yeah. And, it, you know, time flies. It's like it's yes. getting closer. It is. So that's why we're doing these videos. We're helping people to understand exactly what is this world. There's nothing to be afraid of it. And so, um, and we, we provide our own, our service here for people being that bridge to the spirit world. Absolutely.
And we're well, very thank you for taking the time to talk with us today. Well, thank you, Julie. And thank you for your Inner Circle series. This is really fun to be able to do and share with you. And I hear that you have others who have signed up also. Yep, yep, yep. So keep Circles going. are forming. So we get we get different subjects and different ones, right? Absolutely. That's why she's got circles behind her there in her background, which I love. <laughs> time it's like the, the, what is that like the time what is that um it's like a vortex i'm afraid yeah, that's nice. it. <laughs> i got the angel wings i'll fly after you <laughs> come to the light <laughs> okay. and then we can be like they're here we say that around here a lot so <laughs> i'm sure you do and you're not you're not just joking right well, thank you so much. And I look forward to talking to everybody in our next video when we'll be talking about transmediumship and channeling. All right. Well, we'll see you there, everybody. Thanks. Okay. Bye, Jane. everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.